Welcome to United Network News, the official news channel for CARE, the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. I'm Sunny Galt. At UNN, you get the real news. Through our field messengers, we show you the truth about what's really taking place in our communities. We also bring you stories to help you remember who you are and why you're here, as well as regional stories that impact the people. And our World Situation Report reveals what's happening throughout the multiverse. We are here to restore Earth. In the U.S., it is Monday, March 4th, 2024. In our Field Messenger reports, we're learning all about sugar, starting with the sugarcane shortage in Nigeria. Despite having large sugar plantations, many of the locals can't afford table sugar due to terrorism and other attacks. Then in eastern Uganda, we'll visit a sugarcane farm to learn how it's grown and how it's providing a livelihood for this woman and her family. In the New Earth, we're exploring purpose-driven work. How will you use your gifts and talents to contribute to the restoration plan? And these furry friends were once extinct in Switzerland, but now they're thriving once again and contributing to the local ecosystem. This is Kaylin Gipp, messenger for United Network News. Here's a look at today's field messenger reports from all around the world. Despite Nigeria's abundant sugarcane plantations, table sugar remains scarce and costly, terrorism and other attacks, discouraging farmers from cultivating their lands. UNN field messenger Francis Kaylin reports on this situation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Francis Canyon, field messenger for United Network News here in Abuja. Nigeria, that sugar has become very, very scarce and expensive that many families cannot afford it for their tea or other purposes. Um, here to find out the reasons behind the scarcity and why the production of sugar cane, which ought to be in abundance, is not enough for use in factories that can produce sugar for our tables. Yeah, so these are the sugar cane you are seeing operating from trailer and they are also being sold. These are the buyers, these are the marketers, these are our dealers, as you see. Every two weeks, we have uh, one full trailer load um, operated here in the uh, Metropolitan Kujie Area Council. And, uh, it is consumed um, by all the people, both the rich and the poor, um, they like this sugar cane. However, this is the limit of the consumption. We cannot turn it to any other product because it is not enough for the factories to use. Uh, even though we have a lot of places like uh, Niger, uh, Zamfara, um, Katina, all these people can produce sugarcane in large quantity. However, because of terrorism and um, other forms of attack, the farmers are afraid to go to the farm. We want the government to interfere in this matter and make it possible for farmers to have peace of mind to go to the farm and confidence to sell their product. Um, Thank you very much. Once again, my name is Francis Canyon, reporting uh, United Network News here in Abuja. Next, we visit a sugarcane farm in eastern Uganda and learn how it helps to boost income for supporting family members. UNN field messenger Annette shows us her sugarcane farm. Hello everyone, my name is Nabri Annette, UNN News, Eastern Uganda. I'm in Kamuni District, Zaya County, Blum Sub County. Butama village. This is my sugarcane plantation located on Naswa, seated on 10 acres of land. I drained the soil. As you can see, the water is flowing down and the canes are up. I interpret this sugarcane with the cassava and maize. Act as my, my food security. 
This type of sugar, this type of sugar cane grows for 12 months. I planted it in October 2023 and it will be ready in October 2024. I'll cut it and take it to the sugar factory where it will be processed as final sugar. This will help me generate more income to support my family members and I pay the school fees for my children. Thank you. We want you to become a UNN field messenger. These are everyday people just like you who want to make a difference in their community. You don't need any special training or equipment. Just use a camera on your mobile phone and show us what's happening in your area. You send us your videos and our production team will create the report for you. Our new website is now up and running at unitednetwork.earth. You can submit your Field Messenger reports directly through the Field Messenger tab at the top of the page. You can also email your reports through our new email address at fieldmessenger at unitednetwork.earth. Hey, I'm Kirsten from Switzerland. This is Wayne from Tucson. Hi, my name is Desmond from Ghana. I am Claudia from Dawsonville, Georgia. I'm Mikey from Pretoria, South Africa. Hi, I'm Steve McGrath, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. People from all around the world are coming together. Happy day, beautiful world. We are here in a rather small urban garden, and this video is just to show you the joys that we've had in this garden with electric gardening. When news happens in their area, they show us what's really going on. We have people in the streets protesting for and against. At United Network News, our field messengers are changing the face of news. This is Field Messenger Helen reporting with Nature and I'm going to talk to you about the bees again. Take the next step in restoring our planet. Become a UNN Field Messenger today. Hi, I'm Stephanie from South Africa. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. 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 It's up to all of us. We're UNN and we're taking back the news. Part of our purpose in the new earth is to help humanity by sharing our gifts and talents with the world. And that could be anything you're truly passionate about. Maybe you start your own business or shop, or maybe you decide to work on a larger project with lots of other people. It's up to you to find purpose-driven work. Grace Gravestock is a transformation maverick. She is on a mission to redefine success and fulfillment, allowing people to resonate at their highest frequency. Today, we're talking about finding our purpose-driven work, and Grace is joining us again. Grace, I feel like this is so important. So many of us, we go through life just, we're kind of on that hamster wheel, right, of doing things. And we may have a job that we do just because we kind of fell into it or it's making enough money to support uh, our families and things like that. But a lot of us, the, those, the purpose-driven things that we really love that maybe we don't even tell people about, a lot of that gets shoved down. I feel like we're at a point in time where we need to reach back down, <laughs> grab it, and say, now is the time for this to shine. And as a result, I think we will shine as a result. But how, how do we even find that again, right? How do we find that purpose-driven work that's really going to ignite us? Absolutely. It's such a great question, Sunny. I'm glad you asked. Uh, so I feel really passionate about this. I'll tell you, for more than 20 years, I led large-scale technology change projects. And so ultimately, they did make the, the efficiency and they increased, increased efficiency and effectiveness for the big organizations and governments that I worked for. But ultimately, it did automate a lot of the work and people had to find other work. And so now we're facing a place in our human history where I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I see in my meditations hundreds of thousands of people, maybe millions, getting um, 
laid off in the near future if they have it ha it's already started in some sectors and so what's ironic about this is the first part of my life was was actually working on these projects to help people get late i mean i wasn't trying to help people get laid off you know but i was trying to use technology to make things more efficient which ultimately sure. led to people getting laid off and now in the last in this next part of my life i'm focused on helping people find purpose-driven work because here's the reality sunny most uh, when people get laid off and i've been laid off twice uh, they want to find something that's meaningful because you know it's it's actually kind of like what we talked about before it could be a blessing in disguise so when i got laid off the first time i heard this voice that said don't worry this will be the best thing that ever happened to you mm. and I, I was perplexed for a split second and then I chose to trust. And that layoff, when I look back on it, was the best thing that ever happened to me because it kept me from living in this soul sucking spot <laughs> where I was about to sell my soul for, I, I don't even want to tell you, it's so embarrassing what yeah. I was ready to do. I was willing to change because I didn't fit in and I didn't feel like it was a good fit, but I felt like I needed to be something different than what I was in order to stay. So I got laid off and that was the best thing. And so now when I talk to people, you know, knowyourselfrevolution.com, we've, uh, there's, it's a summit and it's also a podcast. It's really featuring successful entrepreneurs who have, who have overcome a challenge and now do purpose driven work. So mm -hmm. I've made it my mission to help spread this message by promoting others who are leading by example in this in this way and there's really three parts to finding purpose driven work as far as i'm concerned and it's simple the first thing is know who you are like if you don't know who you really are then mm -hmm. it's very difficult because you're usually if we don't know who we really are or sometimes we think we know who we are but we're operating from someone else's agenda so yeah. when i look back i realize that's what i was doing for 20 years i was actually um almost 20 years i was I was living my life based on somebody else's agenda. And it was only when I went through a lot of challenging things a few years ago that I realized. So I, be, I learned how to know who I am when I learned about my human design. If you've not heard of that, you can get your, find out what yours is at whatsmychart.com. But that really helped me to see that, first of all, I have a purpose and that there is a configuration that's, that is me, that is unique. And my purpose is to be myself, but I'm also meant to be in a abundance I'm not meant to struggle like we are such powerful beings there's no reason why we should be um, I mean struggle is optional it's not to say there's no struggle in life because it helps us grow right? right but we're meant to be in abundance so yeah. the first step is know who you are and you can under you can take a first step towards that by looking at your human design for free at what's my chart.com the second thing is live in alignment with that design mm -hmm. it's kind of like if you're um, if you're an iPhone and I'm a laptop but I try to as a laptop try to act as a cell phone like that doesn't work it's kind of comical right and it, it's almost like if I were to take my laptop into the pool with me no my laptop is not a waterproof device like my right. phone might be right. so that's what I mean by living in alignment like we need to live in alignment with what we're configured to be it means being ourselves and not trying to be someone else so that is what in human design is called strategy um, and that is that is indicated in the chart you'll get for free at whatsmychart.com. But the third thing of how to find purpose-driven work is to, first of all, realize that you have control. And so I like to say, stand in your own power. And I teach a gratitude practice. You can get it at activateyourlifepurpose.com. Uh, it's a, it takes about five minutes a day. You can take longer, obviously. Five minutes a day and a pen and paper is what I like to say. But that will help you get clarity on the things that you like doing, what you want to to intentionally create in your life. And it actually gives you a process for how to create. So it's it's an amazing thing that, that really changed my life once I understood how powerful gratitude is. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that I can, and I'm, I'm meant to do work that is purpose-driven, it's not just to you know um punch a time clock or something so i like to give that empowering message to others uh activate your life purpose.com is where you can get that two-step process it's free it's a gratitude practice that will help you make amazing things happen in your life
In Australia, a groundbreaking technique is developing a remarkable type of ceramic that has received wide acclaim and several awards. This innovative project recycles old clothing and combines it with waste glass to create green ceramics, a line of designer tiles that are both eco-friendly and aesthetically pleasing. Recognizing the need for sustainable practices, the building and construction industry, which is responsible for 60% of the country's waste, sees great potential in these materials. These sustainable materials are not only being considered for tiles, but are also being explored for use in furniture and as integral structural components, such as walls and foundations. The concept of local micro factories is taking root, allowing for the production of these high quality materials from locally sourced waste. This vision of reducing waste has been actualized with the opening of the first commercially operated micro factory in a rural Australian community, representing a vital step toward achieving a zero waste economy. Legislation has been proposed in Europe to phase out disposable plastics and make society accountable for the millions of plastic bags ending up in landfills and oceans every year. The new proposals cover industry, manufacturing, retail, and people's homes, and are designed to ensure all packaging on the entire market is recyclable. Restrictions will be put on single-use packaging for fruit and vegetables, condiments, sauces, and beverages served in food service, as well as cosmetics and toiletries used in hotels and holiday accommodation. Scientific evidence suggests that plastic bags could take up to 1,000 years to degrade, and the microplastics produced could continue to harm the environment for even longer. Harmful chemicals from these plastics in the sea are known to stunt the growth of vital marine microorganisms and pose a significant threat to both human health and wildlife. The proposed legislation also encourages waste prevention and urges individuals to adopt a more sustainable lifestyle by carrying reusable bags when shopping and keeping them clean to prolong their useful life. The beaver, which was once extinct in Switzerland, has been successfully reintegrated into its waters and is thriving once again. Beavers have a long history in Switzerland, at, and during the Middle Ages, they were wanted for their fur and their glands. Due to the widespread hunting, trapping, and ongoing habitat destruction, as many rivers were channeled, the beaver population dwindled and was declared extinct in 1835. Efforts to bring back the beaver began in the mid 1900s. It all started when a group of conservationists from Zurich successfully reintroduced beavers into the Swiss countryside. And by the 1970s, 141 beavers had been released at different locations. And today there are almost 5,000 animals in Switzerland once again. The positive impact of the beavers and the environment and ecosystem is extraordinary. Their activities slow the flow of water, improving water quality and creating new habitats for amphibians, reptiles and many other aquatic creatures. Their dams also help reduce the risk of flooding and increase groundwater levels. Protective laws for beavers are in place, allowing it once again to become an integral part of the Swiss ecosystem and a beloved symbol of nature and conservation. We are United Network News. Every day we release real stories from real people all over the world. Hill Messenger reporting from Gold Coast, Australia. Denmark. Canada. Uganda. From Atlanta in Southern California. In their own words, people like you share what's really happening in their area. At UNN, you are the news. You are creating a new world with infinite possibilities. You are the restoration plan. Come join us for the real news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday only on United Network. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. Now, a look at regional stories around the world. 
horrible flooding hits Bolivia. And now the northern part of the country has been declared a disaster zone. In Switzerland, the people are taking power back from their government. They're voting on a referendum to increase pension payments. A new study reveals the water in Denmark is loaded with pesticides, toxins, and other harmful substances. The contamination has been deemed critical. And Western Australia becomes the first state to ban single-use, non-compostable coffee cups. Cobija, a city in northern Bolivia, has been declared a disaster zone following severe flooding caused by days of continuous heavy rainfall. The Acre River, which borders Brazil, has overflowed, resulting in the widespread destruction of homes, businesses, and crucial infrastructure. The disaster has forced thousands from their homes, affecting about 31,000 families across the region with a death toll of 42. National authorities and local communities are working together to provide shelter, food, and medical assistance to those impacted. Volunteers are helping in the rescue of pets and supporting displaced families. While the waters are slowly receding, the threat of more rain looms large, raising concerns about future preparedness. In Argentina, there's a disturbing rise in femicides with more than 61 women and girls murdered due to their gender in just the first two months of 2024. This rate marks a near 10% rise from the previous year, intensifying concerns amidst ongoing socioeconomic challenges. Among the victims, a majority were killed in their own homes and nearly one fifth have sought help through prior complaints. As a tragic consequence, 77 children have been left orphaned. This spike occurs as the new administration has controversially abolished the women's ministry, integrating it into a broader portfolio and raising concerns about reducing protections for women. Activists and advocacy groups are now calling on the government for clearer policies and enhanced measures against gender violence. Sweden has decided to abandon its long-standing public stance of neutrality to join NATO. For centuries, Sweden prided itself on the stance of neutrality, avoiding conflicts and acting as a mediator in international disputes. However, the Russian invasion of Ukraine has catalyzed a dramatic change in public opinion, with support for NATO membership leaping from 35% in 2021 to 64% post-invasion. The change marks the largest opinion shift in Swedish political history. While the move is seen as a response to global, growing global and European tensions, some citizens express uncertainty about the implications of joining the alliance. Sweden's alignment with NATO marks the end of an era of neutrality that defined the country's foreign policy since the early 19th century. Germany is making significant efforts to address labor shortages by easing immigration rules for skilled workers from non-EU countries. The new Skilled Immigration Act, effective from November 18th, 2023, and phased in, until 2024, aims to attract professionals in sectors like IT, healthcare, construction, technology, and logistics that are experiencing workforce shortages. The revised legislation allows skilled workers, even those without a university degree, but with relevant experience, to more easily obtain the EU blue card to work in Germany. Changes include lower salary thresholds, waiving language requirements for some jobs, and allowing skilled workers to be employed while their qualifications are being assessed. Additionally, the introduction of an opportunity card in June of 2024 and an increased quota for workers from the Western Balkans reflect Germany's proactive approach to solving its labor shortage through international talent. In a recent Swiss referendum, citizens voted in favor of increasing pension payments 
challenging government and business leaders who deemed the rise unaffordable. Despite predictions to the contrary, 58% supported introducing an additional 13th monthly pension payment. However, a proposal to raise the retirement age from 65 to 66 was notably rejected, reflecting widespread concern over the cost of living and the employment challenges faced by older citizens. Switzerland, known for its high living expenses, sees this vote as a step toward financial security for its aging population, despite potential tax hikes for the younger workforce. Critics argue the measure could strain state finances, but for many, the promise of improved pension benefits outweighs these concerns. The European Union has introduced a new regulation to fix the challenges posed by the surge in short-term rentals, such as those offered through Airbnb. This legislative move, praised by city officials across Europe, aims to balance the growth of tourism with the living needs of local residents. The new rules will require the short-term rental platforms to share crucial data with local authorities. This data includes the location of rentals, the number of nights, nights available for rent, and guest numbers. The regulations aim to preserve residential housing for locals and ensure that accommodations remain available for essential workers, such as healthcare professionals, teachers, and law enforcement officers. The legislation will also address illegal accommodations by mandating their removal from online platforms, protecting tourists from staying in unauthorized lodgings. A recent report reveals the Netherlands and Belgium have the highest level of PFAs, pesticide residues, in fruit and vegetables amongst 27 EU member states. These forever chemicals linked to serious health issues, including cancer, were found in 27% of Dutch and Belgian fruit and vegetable samples. The study, analyzing data from 2011 to 2021, reveals a big increase in contaminated produce, raising alarms about the long-term health risks and environmental impact. Also in the Netherlands, there have been warnings against consuming eggs from backyard hens due to PFA contamination, and concerns are growing over the threat to the drinking water quality. Despite EU efforts to limit PFA's use in various industries, their presence in pesticides remains unaddressed. A recent investigation in Denmark has revealed alarming levels of pesticides and toxins in more than half of the nation's drinking water supplies, posing a significant risk to public health. The study conducted across Denmark's five regions highlighted that one in 10 water sources contain dangerously high levels of harmful substances. This contamination has been deemed critical with calls for immediate action to safeguard future water quality. In response, local waterworks have initiated purification processes to remove the toxic residues. Additionally, the capital, Copenhagen, faces its own challenge, consuming water at a rate up to 2.5 times higher than sustainable levels. In Tunisia, citizens are facing increased drinking water prices as the country struggles with a persistent drought, now entering its fifth year. The government has announced a price hike of up to 16% for consuming households, particularly affecting those with higher water usage. Families using more than 40 cubic meters, almost 10,600 gallons of water, will now see their bills rise by about 12% with the cost for more significant consumption and tourist facilities jumping by as much as 16%. This decision follows earlier measures, including nighttime water cutoffs and restrictions on agricultural water use. Despite recent increases in rainfall, Tunisia's water reservoirs remain critically low, only filled to 35% of their capacity. The country is turning to water desalination projects to combat the chronic water shortage.
Thousands of senior doctors rallied on Sunday in Seoul, South Korea, in support of junior doctors. They're striking against a government proposal to increase medical school admissions. This move, aiming to address the nation's aging population and low doctor-to-population ratio, has led to severe disruptions in hospital operations. Nearly 9,000 medical interns and residents have ceased work, affecting surgeries and treatments at major hospitals. The government's response, threatening license suspensions and legal action, has further fueled this dispute. Critics argue that the quality of medical education and service will deteriorate, failing to address the real issue of shortage in critical but less lucrative medical fields. Public opinion on the matter is divided, with the majority supporting the government's initiative. Thailand is revising its surrogacy law, opening opportunities for foreign couples, including same-sex partners, to pursue, to pursue surrogacy services within the country. This move comes after a 2015 ban imposed on international surrogacy following scandals that exposed the nation's loosely regulated surrogacy market. Under the new proposal, couples must be legally married and guarantee their home country's legal protections for the surrogate child. They may choose to bring their own surrogate or select a Thai surrogate, subject to rigorous government vetting process. This legislative change aims not only to extend surrogacy access to Thai citizens and mixed nationality couples, but also to boost medical tourism. Approval from the cabinet, parliament, and senate is pending. Income inequality has grown in Russia in 2023, with a recent report revealing a growing gap between the nation's rich and poor. The Gini Index, which measures this disparity, showed an increase indicating that wealth is becoming more concentrated amongst the wealthiest 10% of the population. This group now claims nearly a third of all income, while the poorest 10% hold merely 2% of total income. Despite this, average real wages, adjusting for inflation, rose by 7.8%, with the average monthly salary reaching about $810. However, the growth of wages does not seem to offset the increased inequality. In Mexico, schools are facing challenges of underfunding and crime. Vandalism and theft are common with crucial resources like electricity cables frequency, frequently stolen. And students end up having extended online classes due to inadequate facilities. The situation stresses communities already hit hard by poverty, with nearly half of the Mexican population facing extreme poverty. Repair and maintenance efforts are often hindered by theft, causing disruptions in education. Some schools, still recovering from one incident, suffer repeated robberies, leading to tough financial decisions. Limited parental involvement and inadequate law enforcement support complicate recovery. Financial pressures prompt schools to seek more contributions from parents and cut back on essentials, affecting students' learning conditions. Americans testing positive for COVID-19 are no longer mandated to isolate for five days. That's according to an update from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC. Individuals with mild and improving symptoms can now resume work and daily activities sooner, provided they've been fever-free for at least a day. The CDC says it wants to align its recommendations more closely with those for other respiratory viruses citing the difficulty many face in distinguishing COVID from other illnesses based on symptoms alone. The new guidelines encourage people to stay home if they feel unwell and to practice precautions like mask wearing and social distancing upon returning to public spaces. Health workers, however, will continue to follow stricter isolation protocols. In San Diego, California, the homelessness crisis continues to impact both the community and individuals living without permanent shelter. The city's unsafe camping ordinance allows for enforcement against camping in key public spaces, 
Yet critics argue it merely moves the homeless out of sight without offering sustainable solutions. Homeless individuals face constant displacement, highlighting the inefficiency of current approaches. Despite the enforcement of new laws, the number of homeless people in downtown San Diego remains high, with many just relocating outside surveyed zones. Despite efforts to increase shelter capacity and services, many, including local leaders and homeless advocates, emphasize that more substantial systemic solutions are needed to address the crisis effectively. In Chicago, a proposed mansion tax aimed at funding homeless services faces legal challenges, putting at risk a potential source of much needed support for individuals and families struggling with homelessness. The tax comes as a response to the city's significant homeless population, which includes 68,000 individuals, half of which are black and 25% children. However, the real estate industry opposes this tax, arguing it unfairly targets one sector, especially as downtown offices face record vacancies post pandemic. Opposition from real estate groups citing burdens on commercial real estate and potential deterrence to business has led to a legal battle. Despite the lawsuit and ongoing legal challenges, supporters see this measure as a historic opportunity to make a significant positive change in the lives of Chicago's homeless, Chicago's homeless population. In New York City, the surge in popularity of e-bikes and scooters powered by lithium ion batteries has led to an alarming increase in fires. The Fire Department of New York links the increase in incidents to old batteries, lack of maintenance, and use of unofficial repair services. Fires related to these batteries have led to numerous injuries and a significant rise in fatalities, with 18 deaths reported last year. The fire department is actively responding to this threat by inspecting businesses and promoting safety standards for battery usage and maintenance. Despite these efforts, the challenge persists due to the circulation of older non-compliant devices. Meanwhile, national legislation is being proposed to address this critical issue and enhance consumer safety. A significant number of Australians relying on weight loss medications like Ozempic are facing challenges due to regulatory crackdowns by the Therapeutic Goods Administration, or TGA. The TGA has expressed concerns over the safety and efficacy of these compounded products, leading to a proposal to ban the compounding of injectable weight loss drugs. Now, compounding refers to the customization of these medications to fit the unique needs of patients. The uncertainties surrounding access to these treatments has left many worried about the potential for weight regain given the effectiveness of the drugs in their weight management regimes, regimens, I should say. The TGA is currently consulting stakeholders and is expected to make a final decision by June 2024. In the meantime, patients are encouraged to consult with their healthcare providers for guidance and alternatives. Western Australia has become the first state to ban single-use, non-compostable coffee cups, effective immediately. This initiative, effective from this Friday, is part of the state's broader effort to curb plastic waste, already eliminating items like microbeads and plastic food trays. Fines for noncompliance can reach up to $25,000 for businesses. The government aims to educate and gradually implement the ban, allowing businesses time to adapt and switch to environmentally friendly alternatives like compostable paperboard cups or customer provided reusable cups. This ban is part of a broader effort to reduce single use plastics with more than a billion items expected to be saved from landfills each year. The change aligns with Clean Up Australia Day, emphasizing the community's role in combating plastic pollution. Tired of being programmed? At United Network, you'll discover the truth about what's really happening on our planet. 
Get instant access to our written news, UNN newscasts, world situation reports, and in-depth stories from our field messengers. Manifest your amazing abilities as we explore the new earth, plus original series to inspire and encourage you throughout your day. Get connected through United Chat, our personal chat room where you can join the conversation, share your experience, and also submit your questions for Kim. Watch United Network at home or on the go through your computer, favorite online streaming program, or mobile apps. Welcome to United Network News. Start your free trial today. UnitedNetwork.Earth, bringing people together. And now, the World Situation Report with Kimberly Gogan from the Office of the Guardian. The Deep State was looking for a timeline convergence today at 12.01 p.m. Eastern Time. Those that believe they were in line for the throne believe they set themselves up for success over the last few weeks and months. And more on current control systems and what this means for you. Now here's Kimberly Gogan with the Office of the Guardian. Hi, Kim. Happy Monday. Oh, happy Monday. <laughs> is, it, is it a happy Monday? What's going on? <laughs> it's kind of a funny Monday, actually, okay. uh, for me, because a lot of things kind of became a little clearer over the weekend as far as why uh, why what happened with the anti-silent circle and the silent circle, why that happened, mm -hmm. uh, why we're still seeing the remaining few operatives of the SSP or secret space program uh, still running around? Why are they still pushing chemtrails when there's nothing attached to it? You know, why is everybody running around um, doing these crazy things? So right. I was reminded of something over the weekend, and I'll talk to you about that uh, party in a little bit. But so the way that the deep state chooses its leaders is by a line of succession. Mm -hmm. So you can compare this to the way that a family, a royal family, would choose who's next in line for the throne. Mm -hmm. So and they go all the way out to cousins and, you know, it's it's a it's a whole laundry list. You know, you might be 23rd in line for the throne or <laughs> 30 in line for the throne. No, this is how the royal families do it. Mm -hmm. um, so now I was reminded that both sides, so both the Order of the Black Sun and the Order of the Dragon do the same thing. They have multiple families under their umbrella mm -hmm. on both sides, and each family has, each family member has a number. And that number is indicative of where they are in line to be in charge. Okay. You could be number 300 or 3,000. Right. You could be number two. And so since we're getting further and further down the food chain now, as far as available family members are concerned, now what we're seeing is them picking the top, whoever is the top or closest person in line. Mm -hmm. So we talked last week about, for example, Mayor Rothschild. Mayor Rothschild mm -hmm. was in the running um, or something, you know, to be to take Jacob's place is what I thought that we were looking at here. But apparently it's something different. There's always something new and exciting with these people and their belief systems are just insane. So gathered today at Balmoral Castle in Scotland uh, in the pyramid tomb that is located on the on the grounds uh, are some. Uh, secret space program folks and some order of the dragon folks and guess what they have the chair of destiny the <laughs> illuminati chair i know here we go again and they have been trying to various people sitting in this chair and this is what i started seeing early this morning and i'm like why are they doing that again that makes no sense so uh, I see the same thing with another group of people from the Order of the Black Sun going to um, the Seville, I think it's called Savina, Savina Monastery in Montenegro. Mm -hmm. And if you recall, back in December, we had a member of the Pallavicini family who thought he was next in line, who departed this planet in Montenegro. Mm -hmm. And then last summer, we had five other gentlemen from the same bloodline 
go there as well. So this would be the order of the black sun side. Mm -hmm. And then there was a third group of people who decided that they were going to go to the facility in Mount Kilimanjaro and see if they could get something from there. Now, in their mind, and I'm still not exactly sure why, it's not an annual thing. It's not something that happens every year. I think it was a matter of the way they saw the energy flowing. Mm -hmm. And what they were expecting to happen today at 12.01 Eastern Standard Time, to be specific, is a timeline convergence. So based on the back, chat, back chatter, that is what I'm hearing them say. Mm -hmm. Now, this would have been the point to where a dark timeline and a neutral timeline converge together to make one timeline. And the question that they had in their mind and the reason why they've been doing some pretty horrible things over the last few weeks and few months, even more so than normal, is because A, they thought that the next in line to run the world was going to be selected today. And what that means is, is that they would be inhabited by another being. Mm -hmm. So the group in Mount Kilimanjaro, I can't, I, I have to say this without laughing. The group in Mount Kilimanjaro were looking for Anu. The ones in Balmoral were looking to be the next Pindar. Okay. Oh yes, this is happening. And the ones in Montenegro were looking to be the next Mr. Black or Black Dragon or the Dark Prince, as it's called in my world. And in other people's world, they call it the Dark Patri Patron, hmm. like a patron saint of darkness or something. I know this person as the Dark Prince. So by about 12.01 today, uh, nobody came. And they are all targeted for elimination. So we do appreciate you all gathering in the same place at the same time because we're never going to change these people's minds. No. So was there scheduled to be a timeline convergence? The answer to the question would be yes and no. So in order to understand how timelines worked, and the ages worked, you have to understand the mechanism that was behind it. So in source, in anti-source, and then there was a neutral section which was inhabited by both, uh, there was a control of all timelines in all ages. There was a control system there in the past, which then created 1,296,000 timelines per age. Wow. Okay. Some of them neutral, some of them dark, some of them light uh, within each age. <clears throat> okay. So these people were under the impression that this mechanism still existed and they were monitoring it for where, where we would get to the point where we would move into a new timeline. Now, they completely and totally disregarded the fact that we're, we, we are without timelines. Mm. We don't have timelines anymore. Mm -hmm. So if we had done nothing and if the ages were not removed by the divine, by source, then could we have seen a timeline convergence today? Yes, but that wouldn't have been possible for over a year now. Right. Uh, but that doesn't stop them from wanting to be the head cheese, the head honcho. So the fires in Texas were part of this because they have to appease their dark God that mm -hmm. they want to come into their body. Yeah. So the fires in Texas are related to this. The the continued genocide in the Middle East was connected to this. Uh, the continued uh, chemtrails uh, spraying, uh, the continued perpetuation of a possible um, pandemic, uh, you know, disease X, all of these types of things. These were all connected to what was going on here on a bigger level. Now, people started to doubt these people because if you were the next in line, regardless of whether something inhabited your body or not, they were, there were still people in this world taking orders from these folks. Because it was, they felt that it was only a matter of time before something crawled up in there and then that would be the new 
alien god human i i don't for lack of a better term yeah. now when someone who wasn't had this inhabiting their body be it on the black sun side or the order of the dragon side when they had this thing in there if they were if their vessel their body were to pass away it would immediately jump to another human the next in line the next in line mm. typically yes now this hasn't happened in several years now okay. and everybody's been trying to make it happen in some way shape or form which is why we're seeing a lot of an, a large uptick in problems around the world you know things that are evil things that harm people things that harm crops things that cause you know it's almost like the four horsemen of the apocalypse here you know right now you you've got famine you've got you know rising food prices uh, crops burning in different places in the world you know you you have all of the different factors there they felt to get these beings to come back and when they fail on a specific day new moon full moon or otherwise they feel they have not done enough to appease their god mm -hmm. and this is why we keep seeing the uptick in in these in these events happening around the world and the constant uh you know is uh, what are they looking for here what are they looking for there what are they doing over there why are they in this location you know and and we have to find the mechanism that was put there by non-human beings Mm -hmm. that they could potentially utilize like the situation we saw in Friday on Friday in Greenland. Yeah. So all of this is directly connected to what I the information I gave you in part on Friday with the control of the currents. Mm -hmm. Now, I gave you the financial information of current C and why it's called that and how it was utilized. But there's a bigger picture here, so I was hoping that to give people the weekend to kind of digest that information because it was a lot to take in. Mm -hmm. And that fiat doesn't have in any way mean that it was related to gold backing or non-gold backing uh, in any way. That's just the information that they put out there for you. Right. Okay, so let's talk about current control systems. Okay. Now, we know that when I use the word current right now, I'm referring to a current or a flow. Mm -hmm. So it could be the flow of energy, you know, which is related to the financial system in part, but not in totality. Uh, and it could be the control, uh, current control of essence, where your soul goes, you know, your soul is constantly generating essence. Um, and the control of the current of matter as well. This is where the disease programs come in. So if you can control the matter, not just in your human, not just human disease, you have plant disease, we have all kinds of things going on on planet Earth, and not only here, but in many places in the multiverse, the same thing happens. Mm -hmm. It's about matter control, uh, frequency control, uh, vibration control, lowering people's frequencies. What we have coming through our television is just one minor example of what the control of frequency, the current of frequencies can do. Uh, the same thing went for your consciousness control. That's where we get the title Mar Duke, Duke of the Sea. But each, and then we also had time control, ages control, timeline control, the current meaning when the next timeline is going to come into play. Uh, all of these types of current controls were mechanisms that humans, I would say you're talking about the deep state, uh, that humans only maybe had a little tiny, tiny access to. You know, it wasn't uh, the bigger mechanism by any means. Most of these control systems existed both for the dark and the light and then there was also a neutral control system that could control either side so it was kind of like a regulator mm -hmm. or a regular regular regulatory body that would control these things and none of the people on that level were humans okay. however let's talk about minor parts of current control 
systems how and how this would have affected you. So in the world, I've said this many, many times, the control factors of planet Earth are financial control systems, political control systems, media control systems, intelligence control systems, and military. Mm -hmm. And these are the ones that everybody focuses on controlling all of when they want to control the world. Yeah. Now, above operative level, but below the alleged chosen ones in the line is a group, five groups, that were established under the order of the Black Sun's contract or covenant with many different parties way up the food chain. But these particular groups are only aware that the order of the Black Sun is in control of them. So these five groups have been waiting now for a long time for the next patron or dark prince to come into being. In the meantime, they have been taking orders from the black nobility in the anti-silent circle and now the silent circle. Okay. So they have new bosses now, the silent circle. These people would be over Langley Five. Mm -hmm. or the global group of generals. They would be higher than the militaries. They would be higher than the intelligence agencies all around the world, with the exception of the global intelligence agency. So these parties have headquarter locations in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And I've known about the groups for a while. They used to have a lot of access to the financial system, a lot of access to the political systems, a lot of access to the media systems, uh, and intelligence and military in the past. Now, unfortunately, what has been happening is each one of these groups has been lied to by a different person that's in line. Mm -hmm. claiming that a day ending in Y is going to be when, they're, when they are going to be inhabited by this being, one of the three. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> thus far, no one has been successful. If you remember, and it's probably been a few months now, where we talked about a meeting where the generals were supposed to show up and I said that they had some kind of a meter that could detect if they had been successful in having something crawl up in there. Mm -hmm. These are the groups that have that meter. Okay. So they're looking for the leader. Now, there is a call that's scheduled at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. So that's at the time of this recording. That's already happened. Mm -hmm. To where they were supposed to show themselves to the groups to prove that they were now in charge. But an interesting and zippy little and exciting twist started happening yesterday. So we talked about the fact that the Order of the Black Sun would get 10% of every bit of money that came through from the family sector, through the families, I should say, the Order of the Dragon, in order to provide security in each of the five sectors. Mm -hmm. So 2% would go to the financial sector and then they would pass the money through. They were, for lack of a better term, gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. uh, there was 2% that would go to the political sector, 2% to the media sector, 2% to the intelligence sector, and 2% to the military sector. However, they have not received any money since the Trump administration. No shock there. Okay. They have finally come. Okay, so I had a conversation with someone that was a part of the financial control sector headquarters mm -hmm. who actually reached out to me yesterday. And I thought that this was interesting. I'm like, you know, no, none of these people have ever wanted to talk to me before, but they put somebody up to calling me, let's just say. Okay. So this person, you know, and I had a discussion about this, about this headquarter office, and they explained that they are now aware they hate uh, the Kazarian mafias and the Order of the Dragon. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. They hate the line of Solomon. And as you and I both know, they, this was during the time and it was set up this way to where they would then take over after the line of Solomon contract expired. They were told that they would now be in charge. Right. Now, these people are not good people either. The people that were running all of these different sectors, Mm -hmm. they're bad people. There are people that are blowing up and killing people in the Middle East. They are people. So, you know, we're not we're not they are under the impression they're the white hats. This is where the information origination came from of the white hats, because there are a lot of people in there that under the are are under the impression that they are securing their respective countries Mm -hmm. in each one of these five sectors Mm -hmm. and that the new leadership is going to take over. And that they will be in charge of securing it on behalf of all the people and we, the people and all this stuff, you know, and I'm listening to this guy tell me this story yesterday and I'm like, okay, so would you like to hear my side of the story? So I proceeded to explain to him what they're doing, who they're waiting for. Uh, This person is from the lower astral. They said, well, it's part of the divine plan. So I had to explain to this person, well, there's two sides to divine, actually three when you look at it that way. So you had source, which we would consider divine, Mm -hmm. and you would also consider anti-source divine in the world, in the way that the universe functioned, because they're two halves of a whole. They were at one point. So you could say the fallen angels were working for source as much as the angels were working for source. And the demons worked for anti-source and the angels worked for source and, mm-hmm. and all were considered in their world and in their mind divine. Yeah. Not differentiating one separate from the other with the exception of during a dark time, during a dark age, that the divine of darkness had more power and control than the divine of all light. The other thing that these people probably on this level they're unaware of is that um, the reason why most of the power centers of of this world uh, chose darkness is because they could make money doing evil. They consider it divine, but that's still not the case. Mm. No, not at all. Um, But you could get away with doing a lot of very harmful, bad things and not adhering to natural law when you're working with the unnatural side of things. Right. On the opposite side, you know, according to them, the light can be very restrictive. Mm-hmm. So these people were under the impression they were working for the light. They just didn't understand when they kept saying divine what that meant. So these people in both sides were claiming to them that they were of divine bloodlines. True, not true, a eh, little gray, little gray area there. But it just depends on what your view of divine actually is. Now, with all the changes that have taken place, these bloodlines are no longer relevant. Mm-hmm. They're no longer divine. They're no longer part of a new system in any way, shape, or form. So waiting for a timeline convergence day, a full moon, a new moon, an alignment is not going to help these people any because the beings they're looking to be inhabited by do not exist. So they can re- – I'm assuming what's going to happen after this is whoever is left alive and next in the line, you know, you go all the way into the millions here. So it's not like – you know, they're going to run out of people anytime soon. They, when you go on down further the line, is they going to find is, you know, in a next alignment or a next convergence or a next, this probably the uh, solar eclipse, you know, in April or whatever it is, nothing will change. They will still be a human. Everything bleeds and everything dies. They're still people and no one will continue on with this old divine bloodline because it was decided by the divine Mm -hmm. that we would no longer be in a dark age. I wish I could claim that was my decision, but it wasn't. When the divine changes something, you either change with it 
or you go away. It's just that simple. We are not looking for a timeline convergence because the timeline system in current current control of the timelines is no longer exists. Mm -hmm. So they can move that chair around to holy high heaven or anywhere else on earth or take it to the moon. It doesn't matter because nothing is going to change. And how did he take that news, Kim? <laughs> oh, dear. Um, the person I was speaking to, let me kind of describe this person a little bit to you. Mm -hmm. So the person I was speaking to seemed like a nice person. He did not have bad intent. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he truly believed that he was doing something good for this planet uh, and has been doing this for a long, long time. He knows all the generals. He knows all the people. And I would say he wanted to take some funding from these, you know, from the financial sector, the 2%, and he wanted to do something positive for humanity. Mm -hmm. So I don't take this person as a bad human. Yeah. I take him as a person who has been lied to repeatedly over and over and over again and expecting a different result. Yeah. Now, he was also promised that he would have a number, a number, and that they thought that he could potentially be the next one in line, unbeknownst to himself, because he doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. But that's what they were hoping they could get him to do, be that next person. So it was all hands on deck. We're going to collect all these people, and we're going to bring them and just see which one gets the thing in there, whatever the thing they were waiting for. Uh, now, Interestingly enough, uh, they felt that Donald Trump was one of those people, that he was in line and he was going to be, I know, well, you know, they've been dragging that dead carcass or used to <laughs> drag they the dead were, carcass yeah. all over the dang planet, you know, to Belize and all these different places trying to get something to inhabit it. It's just so weird. Like, why Donald Trump? I mean, what what made him so special in their eyes? Bloodline. Number, bloodline. number, number in line, bloodline. But what made him super special is that he was a very good liar. Yeah. <laughs> and the global financial control headquarters were under the impression that he was receiving the money. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yep. Uh, so then he must be the one. Right. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. That was me, and it had nothing to do with this person. And you can look up hours and hours and hours of conversations we had on a diplomatic line, you know, and now here I go again. I'm explaining the same thing over and over and over again to these people because they actually don't know. They really didn't know. So the people behind this person didn't know either. And if I hear the terms Donald Trump got it done one more time from the <laughs> operative group or these people groups or anybody's groups, no, he didn't. What he did was he took money with and then ran his own game yep. with that money. Hmm. He didn't pay off the student loans. He didn't help the people with Hurricane Michael. He didn't even do anything after the elections got all screwed up. He was a part of the screwing the elections up, to be honest with you, because really bad things were supposed to happen for the next four years to us all. And then after that, he would come back as the hero and save everybody. You know, I know. But the point was, is that these people didn't know either. Mm -hmm. So they went and did a lot of research earlier this morning, and now they're starting to see the truth. And they were still taking orders until yesterday from these people, but they had a feeling that something was wrong and that these people were lying to them because why is it? Because whoever was in that position before could just transfer money like crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, they'd get their 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, and they were happy, you know, making money, paying all their people, life was good. Yep. <clears throat> but they didn't understand why it stopped. And now they know. So, yeah. So do all of those groups know now? I know it could it trickle in from the guy that you talked to, to all five of those 
groups? Well, I'm pretty sure probably, yes, it could. Okay. Now, these are the ones that would have fed the operatives, that would have fed the Langley Five generals. These are the ones that would have fed them as far as the financial sector is concerned. Now, as far as political and media and intelligence and military, they've been taking orders too. Uh, to control, you know, keep the war going in Russia, Ukraine, whatever that's happening over there right now, the Middle East situation that recently came about. These are the people that would call that would take the orders. Mm -hmm. They definitely had figured out by the time they reached out to me yesterday in my morning, they definitely had figured out that the families could no longer, the Order of the Dragon families could no longer transfer money. They okay. definitely figured that out. Okay. But who can? So this guy threw my hat in the ring, told him that, you know, well, she seems to be doing it. She's the one that did with the Treasury. She's the one, you know, and then now they've confirmed that all the money that came through Trump actually came from me, the large right. numbers. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So where where they go from here, who knows, you know? I told them I don't have a contract with you because they yeah. were looking for their 2%. And I said, yeah. I don't have a contract with you. Maybe my terms and conditions are better, but you're going to have a different scope of work and you're going to take orders from somebody else. If you want to go back and continue to take orders and wait for the patron of the dark prince to enter somebody's body, then feel free to do so. And I said, I will rip every single thing you have in the financial system out within a day. Right now, they don't have much left anyway. They have, they can see some some things through some systems, but they can't touch it. They can't block it. They can't move anything. So, now, what do you think would be best case scenario um, with this, Kim? Would it be that we somehow work with them, or that they that they do what? what yeah. What what could this lead to? What good? What good is this? Besides them knowing the truth, that's important. Right. And not hurting people and stuff. But are we talking about a partnership here or are we just. Uh, in this particular case, no. OK. No, no contracts, no, nothing like that with them. No, you know. A different scope of work would be outlined. They could be contracted to fulfill that scope of work. Mm hmm. Since I am actually the one that's giving out the money, I don't need to dictate a small, tiny percentage to people. Right, right. Now, that's if they want to. And I laid this out, and, and there were some words that would get bleeped out on the news. But I, I laid it out to them, and I said, look, I'd have to sit down and talk to you. You know, what do you want to do? What can you do? What What are you going to do? This is the new way we're going. Mm -hmm. Uh the flip of money to, from credits to real money, uh, you know, obviously was an indicator to them that something was happening here. Sure. Uh, and and the way the old control structure worked doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. So is there a possibility for some benefit? So let's see benefits. Uh, right now, I've been breaking down every single thing that they have as far as mechanisms concerned. Mm -hmm. Uh, not just in the financial sector, but also in the media sector, their worldwide network of media controls, uh, their intelligence controls, their military controls, political controls, obviously. And they still have a downline of people that obviously are going in the wrong direction based on orders that they're, they are being given. Uh, would it, do they have people in every single bank and every media organization, every intelligence organization, every military organization, all politics worldwide? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. In the past, I'm not saying that's the case at the moment, but in the past, you know, they could call up any president of any country and tell him to dance, and he's going to dance that to that exact song and that exact tango that they pointed out for him to do. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the case right now? Not so much. Now, the reason why I say not so much is because they're getting orders. They're being told that they're going to be paid on X day or Y day. The y X or Y day doesn't happen. And therefore, 
these people are also losing credibility with the operatives that do the work. You know, the operatives have pretty much basically read them the Royal Riot Act, most of them, not all of them. Uh, and and they're like, fine, pay us. Okay, mm -hmm. you're not paying us. Okay, you know, let us know when you're going to pay us. You know, that's their whole thing right now. So they're losing credibility at a rapid rate. And they wanted to see basically what I would do. So I laid it out. I said, no, we're not, I'm not sending money through just because you think you're entitled to 2% from some old line that doesn't control anything anymore. Yeah. You know, they're the ones that did that contract and it's been in place for thousands of years. I mean, it's not new. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to change, you know, and you want to work within the new system, it's every man for himself, every woman for themselves. So, you know, pick a side because mm -hmm. at this point, that one, you know, everybody's going off a cliff. So we'll right. see. You know, we'll see what they decide to do. This was the first time I've actually talked to those people directly. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. So be interesting to see what's happened now that uh, nobody had the golden booty sitting in the chair. <laughs> you know, nobody came out of Kilimanjaro. Nobody's coming back from Montenegro. And nobody's leaving that pyramid tomb, at least not upright, uh, in Balmoral. So... Are we going to go another round? Are they going to try to find the next in line and wait for the next day day ending in Y? Will they still have any credibility by that point? You know, I'm going to say probably not. I mean, it's I'm guessing they'll probably pick the solar eclipse, you know, uh, in April, April 8th. Uh, is that going to help them? No. Nope. And the only thing that's going to do is allow us more time to rip more out of all these systems and every single thing that we can find that that allows them to do their job. So every day that goes by, they will continuously lose more and more and more because they're not working in the new way. So we will, by default, retire them for themselves mm -hmm. by then. So their choice, their call. Now, how do I explain this? Okay, so on our end of it, we talked about the fact that all quantum AIs have multiple densities and multiple planes in each density. Mm -hmm. And I told you a few months back that we had landed into density one, plane one. Yep. Now, within density one, plane one, you have several different things that happen about nine different layers in total within that plane, which then brings you to the customer account. For example, things that are reflected in the bank's back office are not what's reflected in your account. Okay. So like when you log in online to your checking account, savings account, I, they still call it checking, funny enough, but does anybody <laughs> no even write those checks. anymore? We've yeah. got check cards. That's why. Yeah. We've got those check, check cards. card account. Yeah. <laughs> um, but... Um, there are many different things that happen. And then there's a conversion to like JavaScript when it goes over to the phone app that you use. And then the other one goes the other way to the website. And then when you back it up from there, what's reflected in the back office of the bank looks very different from what's reflected in a teller window. Okay. So there are very minor programming errors is what we were dealing with last night uh, when I worked until, I don't know how many hours yesterday, probably about 17 or so. Uh, but that's where we left it financially last night, is that we were about, we had three, two, and one with the final steps uh, to reaching you. So um, we're not quite there yet on that aspect of it, but we're, we're very, very close to the end. And those are just remnants of old programs. So... We are, we are getting there on our side uh, to be able to do things without anybody's help, anybody's assistance, anybody's anything. The only thing I need to make sure is also that you're not attacked. You can come out with the technologies, come out with the new things. So how does that work, though, Kim? Because... I mean, if people are, you know, submit a project, source approves it, they get the funding yeah. for it, it goes into their checking account or however that works, 
um, obviously we don't want these people attacked, but at some point we have to be like, we got to move forward. Like you said, there's millions of yeah. people on their downline. Yeah. No, and I agree with you, but we have to look at the things that are the most important to them on, on down. Okay. You know, who needs the most security? People that need the most security would be people that are coming up with cure for disease that make the pharmaceutical companies millions of dollars. So we need to take a look at those people. The higher the, higher the stakes, yeah. the more that person or persons are, is going to be attacked. Yeah. They want to take over everything. They want it for free because they've been used to using our minds for free. So I gave an example on, on our Telegram chat. Uh, over the weekend, someone had asked me about a specific product and I gave my opinion of that product and, and that company. And, and I'll leave it at that. And I explain, and this person said, well, no, that doctor uh, did not, you know, because this was based on the conversation we had on Friday's news, hmm. that product. So they said, oh, he's got the patents, he's got this, he's had some intelligent conversations online. And I said, well, sure. You know, then I also pointed out a few other names that I could recollect off the top of my head that also have a lot of patents. You know, there's a gentleman by the name of Lowell Wood. Uh, Lowell Wood has had submitted thousands of patents and within a one year to two year time frame. Yeah, we talked now, about him on the news, didn't we? Like, I a, think a we did a long ago. time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now the Woods are like the Johnsons and the Rogers. Okay. Yeah. And and the Woods, uh, Mr. Wood didn't actually create anything. Uh, he's actually funded by Bill Gates. Uh, and you can verify all of this. It's all on the Internet. You can go to the patent office and see all his plethora of patents that were submitted. And there's no way he sat in a lab and toiled and created and all of this. No, he was just a front, much right. like Elon Musk is a front yep. for different types of technologies, just like Einstein was a front. Yep. You know, all of the ones that the that they didn't attack were just fronts for stolen technologies from humans. And that could be any human that created anything. You know, a lot of people strive to get contracts with militaries and agencies on special technologies. And I don't know why you do that, because you're alerting them to the fact that you have something. Exactly. Well, you know, this type of engine, this type of whatever, you know, that would work within, you know, then they're going to take it from you call it classified and lock it away forever. And if, that way, if anybody ever tried to bring this technology out, you know, they're going to claim that they own it. Right. They bought it. They got it. You know, it's their technology. They tried to do the same thing to me with the, with the different type of train, uh, the levitating train. It's not magnetic levitation. So it's not maglev. It's a different type of levitating train. And they still told me it's classified. I said, classified by who? I don't work for you. You know, and then we got into this argument. But most people who invent things or have um, technologies, uh, creative technologies that could change the world, they're not business people. They're scientists, yeah. you know, and they like that's where they're they're happiest creating and and coming up with new ways of doing things. And, yeah. you know, and, and there's a whole system around the patent system that existed uh, as well. So people think in order to protect your technology, you have to submit it to the patent system. Also, to get any funding for your technology, you have to submit to the patent system. Yeah. You also have to have proven technology, which means that there's money involved in proving your technology, whatever it is, actually works. Mm -hmm. You could get thrown into the cycle of your new medicine for this disease or that disease being locked away in their laboratories. And I say there because... Any of the major laboratories around the world that have great technologies for determining if this medication or that thing works to cure this, um, you know, then they can lock it away in there forever. And you'll never get your approval. You'll never get your launch date. And they know all of this. <clears throat> or they'll tweak it and add a little bit of something 
So it's something that you have to take for the rest of your life. Yep. You know, it's, it's a money making scheme, but it's also part of the current control system. When you think about it, um, currency control, who can receive current C, a piece of the current C energy system, the energy current system for this technology or that technology. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the way it was designed. Uh, and, and just so you know, when you apply for the patent system, you're basically, there's a little Santa Claus in there. I call them the little hidden clauses where you are actually turning the ownership over your patent to them. That's so frustrating. Yep. What a mess. I know. Everything is, that's what I keep trying to say. It's like, you know, we, we have a basic understanding. These people are bad. You know, mm -hmm. we know that. Uh, and, but, but just how were these systems structured? Yeah. And how did we get there from here? And how are we going to have humanity thrive if any of these systems still remain? So do we have to take down those systems or do we wait for the systems to implode? Both. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to mention to you, and then probably should get back to work, but the next thing I wanted to mention to you was the financial system crash. Okay. Because we talked about it last week, and I'm going to mention it again to you. Because what it looks like to me is this could potentially happen tomorrow. Now, by crash, does that mean it's going to hit the news media? Probably not. Does that mean you're going to see the markets tank? Probably not. Uh, there also is chatter amongst these crazy groups here about stopping all Bitcoin trade. I've heard that too. Uh, there is talk about stopping all crypto trade. I've heard that too. Now, was that based on the amount of chaos that is created and how much remains hidden, of course, can be controlled by the next person in line who's waiting to take the seat? Uh, are the global financial control people headquarters and the global, finan global media control people going to get together and actually put out the information? to make humanity go crazy. Do you think that's why the guy reached out to you yesterday is because all this could go down pretty quickly and he was trying to put feelers out with you? Well, because they do know that behind the scenes, the financial system is done, okay? Mm -hmm. Not our financial system for the people, but the right. financial system as it was system. is done. Yep. It's over. Yep. I think they reached out for that reason, number one. Number two, if the events of today and someone did have the golden booty to sit in the chair of destiny for the Illuminati and became something, then these people probably would have reacted accordingly. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to know, in my opinion, what they wanted to know is, is there a possibility if this person is the new person? Because we don't know who she is. Yeah. Um, they've been told you know, just like everybody else was told that, well, oh, I'm just a hacker, you know, oh, you know, she doesn't control anything. Oh, just let it go. You know, these people are the real people in control. Are, so the question is, are they going to still continue to take orders from the next, 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 next in line to see if they can then become that being and give them some access and control? Mm -hmm. If they do that, It'll still take time, in my opinion, for it to trickle down into the public sector. What we're seeing happen behind the scenes on the 28th, 29th of February is pretty much the end of the road. That's why I missed when, last Wednesday's news with the quadrillions and bonds and all of right. these things disappearing. Cool. So these, these people make no mistake see that. You know, they see that happening. They also see their access dwindling. They also see their badge numbers not being applicable, ac applicable when they are going into certain financial systems. 
Mm-hmm. You know, the access isn't there. Are they are they going to move? Are they going to take the orders? Are they going to inform the military arm of them that you know the media arm of them to announce this publicly? I don't think so because nobody got what they were expecting today at noon Eastern or just shortly after midnight in China. So what would be the purpose then if you're not going to inform people why why crash the markets? What what's because it's an inevitable situation that's already happening. So they can't stop it. So it's going to crash, but they can't do anything about it. No, they can't do anything about it. So then they're just point. trying to stop the bleeding by not telling media, by not letting the information get out. Right. How much chaos is going to happen with 8 billion humans? I mean, right. not everybody banks. So, you know, there's yeah. a lot of unbanked, more unbanked people in this world than there are banked people and people that can afford to make investments and those types of things. But how much chaos are we going to see on the streets? Now, if they had gotten their way and the golden booty people had worked out, then and they actually had gotten some money because the patron came back, I would have thought at that point it would have been massive chaos. Mm -hmm. They would have put everything you can possibly imagine into the media because they would have then started getting paid again. Right. Now, where are they going to go from here? Are they still going to take orders? And I shouldn't say this, Sonny, because to say there is nothing they can do would be wrong. They could actually reach out, have a conversation, get things moving, possibly yeah. get themselves another contract, and and help fix it mm-hmm. and be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. Are they willing to do that? Do they want to do that? How much control do they have over the banks, really? What are they bringing to the table? What do they have to offer us at this point? I'd like to know. Yeah. You know, who's still taking orders from you? Like, are you still, you know, you know, you're bringing a network of people, I assume, at this point. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. We'll see what comes of that. Might be nothing. Might never hear from this person ever again. I don't know. But I mean, even in trying to stop the bleeding, let's just say it goes down that path and they don't reach out. You can only do that for so long, right? Like that's that's a Band-Aid. Well, for them, you know, they could they they can keep it from bleeding into the public sector predominantly because they do not have the accessibility at this point to pull all of your money and your investments out. Mm -hmm. Now, they could raise and lower the price of stocks, uh, not on a bulk level and not on a global scale. Uh, They can try to manipulate numbers on websites. You know, uh, people do that all the time. So I I would say that... um, limited things they can do to stop the the public from figuring out what's happening. Now, on the government sector, <clears throat> you know, presidents won't sign the bill. You know, you might see it kicked down. And then, you know, it's, it never ceases to amaze me how no one pays attention to to these bills because they pass a financial bill of some sort, pick a country, any country. Mm -hmm. And then a few months later, they're having to pass another bill that was the same as the bill that they just did a few months ago. (laughs) No one's keeping track. (laughs) I'm like, you just passed a year budget. I don't, you know, or six months or whatever it was, three months. Like, isn't anybody keeping track of this stuff? Yeah. You know, it just seems like we forget what they said yesterday for some reason. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. just strange how that all works. And people just take whatever's on, you know, because it's Good Morning America or the Today Show or BBC or CNN. You know, they just take whatever they say on there to be true. And that's it's so true. Yeah. They don't, I, don't think a, I don't think a lot of people realize that a bill is really a bill. Like something yeah. is due. Yep. You know, and if it's not ratified and goes through the Hall of Records, well, then you don't get your money. And none no. of these things have been ratified. So I know it amazes me, too. I like hear about, you know, here in the U.S., Congress passing some, you know, multi-trillion dollar. I'm like, <laughs> maybe we just don't 
I don't know, you know, we have our busy lives and we have a lot going on in our own personal lives, I get it. But like, maybe we just don't understand, at least here in the US, how much money the government actually has and what they could actually use. Like even when things were being paid and stuff. Because uh -huh. sometimes when you get into those high numbers, it just goes right over everybody's head. It's like, okay, what's, you know, we can't fathom X trillion dollars. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So it just. Well, I mean, okay. even when you do the math, it doesn't even make any sense. And and the ridiculous numbers that this administration is coming up with are just insane. Oh, yeah. And part of that is because they were so close to the order of the dragon and the order of dragon has to feed you know, the other side. They have to feed, you know, the order of the black sun. They have to feed those people too. So they pad, they're, they're bringing forward all of these enormous budgets yeah. with the hope, I guess, of having total control. And it's not the U.S. government. It's just, it's, it's the governments behind the governments. It's the people behind the governments. And then eventually these guys way down the food chain get 2%, <laughs> which is still... To be That's fair, a lot. large amount. I mean, yes, think about two percent of, you know, trillions of dollars, and you're just <laughs> talking about one government there, Sonny. You're not talking about all the governments. Right. Right. Yeah. Except the problem is, is that there is no ten percent, there is no two percent, there is no hundred percent, there's no eighty percent, there's no sixty percent, there's nothing coming down the food chain at this point. Right. It is dry. The well is dry. Mm -hmm. So. Do they try to continue to secure a financial system that used to be in place? Or they try to figure out some kind of a service that they could provide to 8 billion people? Their choice, their, their call, you know, but I, I am seeing, you know, it's going to start hitting markets. You know, they've been trying to prop up the markets and that kind of thing. It's going to start hitting markets. My guess would be based on who's, which nation is worse off than another. I'm going to say it's going to be a tie between China and the United States. Mm. They're running neck and neck right now. So we'll see. We'll and see. It's not like it's not a long period of time, right? Like, I mean, I know you don't no. you don't necessarily want to give dates and stuff, but like, I mean, how long can they hold this up? Well, the one thing that is keeping it from affecting you per se, like I said, is they can't reach into the kitty. Right. They don't have the right to reach in for anything. They don't have a custodial agreement to reach in to get anything from you. Mm -hmm. So what would normally cause that to happen in the past is when they had some accessibility, when they had a they a custody agreement, mm -hmm. uh, and then they would take that through to the ANA system and issue a bond off that money, and then they would get money in return is how it used to work. But in the absence of that, even if they took every human's money and, and you know corporation, if you own your own company. Um, and they tried to put it all into one big kitty, they still can't solve the problem. Wow. So, you know, they did come up with uh, the scam of, like I said, taking a few pennies or a penny here mm -hmm. and there off of your, you know, currency exchange rates or the other thing they're playing on right now. Uh, I think the reason why they're talking about uh, stopping all Bitcoin trading is because they want to take the money out of it. Again, that's an NSA program. Mm -hmm. uh, Blockchain itself was a DARPA program, which was actually created by the SSP uh, based out of Las Vegas. Uh, SuperNAP was the largest uh, organization for that. So that's pretty much where I see it right now. So do I think it's going to hit the public? I don't. It doesn't look like it. Uh, were they probably going to do that if they were successful today? I think yes. Uh, I think they wanted 8 billion people. They call it the Great Awakening. Oh, that's you know, the their great, great awakening. Oh, that's okay. It. Yep. <laughs> we are going to torture the heck out of you. You're going to wake up to the fact that we are the boss. That's yeah, what exactly. you're going to wake up to. Yeah. So I know. God bless them. Like they bless us. Exactly. So 
We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens for the rest of the week. It's Monday in their world. I mean, it's just another day ending in my, why in mine. I worked all day yesterday and all weekend long and all day Friday and, yeah. you know, without fail. Yeah. I would, too, like a day, a day off, you know, <laughs> at some point. So get get a little fresh air once in a while. Seriously. Yeah. But hopefully uh, that'll happen real soon. So to answer your questions, you know, uh, Definitely making progress, moving further, uh, further ahead on our end of it. Uh, I can see where um, security may or may not be an issue, uh, where we could see a turning point if this is the case. Mm -hmm. uh, I do believe that some of these people thought they were working for the good and divine or God or whatever, uh, and that was absolutely not the case. I can see that some people are very upset. It's been 24 hours since they figured out that they actually – have been doing, you know, bad things and others of them knew, you know, mm. they're just there for the money, member of the Green Party, so to speak, <laughs> the dollar party. Yeah. Uh, you know, at this point, let's just hope, mm -hmm. you know, let's let's keep reaching out to the big boss. Let's ask for change, you know, and the same thing that I'm doing every day and I'm trying to effectuate that change. Uh they no longer have any access at all, zero access to any of the current C's uh, of the various C's at play here uh, that make up our matter, make up our life. Uh, that has uh, been a huge help uh, in turning the tide. Uh, do they have any other technologies uh, that they could possibly access through? I, I don't think so. It might cause a small disturbance for a little while, but I don't think so. You know, and today, you know, after nobody won the contest there, they're just all mad at me. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't write your crazy papers. I know. I was going to say, what do you have your, to do with the golden booty chair? Like, they just, they have to have a scapegoat. That's what it is. <laughs> I tried to tell them a year ago that the chair doesn't work. I, didn't I? Or... <laughs> Maybe was that it was last a couple summer? levels ago. Those people are long gone, back to source. Now we're. <laughs> it was last summer, I told you, when you guys were all brought the chair here and you kids stood up, sat down, stood up, sat down, and nothing happened. Oh, for the love of God, leave the chair alone. Maybe we need to have someone go take the chair. I don't know. Or oh, geez. Send it really into another dimension or something. I, I don't know. It's just a chair. Yeah. With a stone with some metals in it. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. You can take it to all the portals you want to take it to, and nobody is coming. I wonder where that chair is going to end up. I wonder if it actually will get destroyed at some point, or it'll be in some <laughs> obscure house that no one even knows what it is. You know, like some of those relics we've talked about in the past, it's like yeah. hidden in plain sight. Yeah. And you have no idea, like, it, the original purpose or, like, that one loom we talked about a long time ago. Or like, Oh, yeah, oh that's right. That's I know. Like, you know, we should, have, we should actually collect these things and make a deep state <laughs> museum. Well, and then when it's history, yeah. you know, yeah, the history, yeah. I'm sure there's a Hitler museum somewhere or something <laughs> like that. Other evil people throughout time. Yeah, let's so take down why don't we one. make a deep state museum? Oh, can you believe that they... Used to traffic humans? Wait, wow. You know, <laughs> 50 years from now, 100 years from now, all that'll be history. Yeah, that's true. So, and not that we have to wait 50 or 100 years, guys. So just relax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could you notice that? That's not what I said. That? You're like, Kim says it's another 50 years. <sighs> I was saying, making a statement. Can you imagine your grandkids or something going to a, a deep state museum because it was history? You know, yeah. they're not going to a present day museum. <laughs> Look at this. This is the chair they sat in a thousand times, grandkids, you can say to them, Sonny. And I was there and I heard everything. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, Never that's know. That's all it's good for now. So Exactly. Hmm. And I'm sure there's many people out there that are looking forward to the day where they can turn to their family members or estranged friends and say, I told you so. <laughs> told you so. And believe yeah. me. <laughs> All right, Sunny, that's going to be it, I guess, for Monday, the 4th of March. All right, sounds good. We'll see you next time. 
Want to share news from UNN? Help us change the face of social media and use it for good. Connect with us through our online channels. Our social media team creates clips from each newscast you can easily share with people you care about. And that's also where you'll find our UNN meme of the day. It's a great way to encourage critical thinking. Links to all of our social media sites are available at the bottom of our website, which is unitednetwork.earth. Let's change the face of news together. And that wraps up today's news update. Please share UNN with your friends and family. We need everyone to come together and help restore our planet. When news happens in your area, record it and share it with us so we can help you share it with the world. Remember, if it's going to be, it's up to me. I'm Sunny Galt. Join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the real news.